All right, come check out these first year graphs. Come join me in the chaos. All right, it's a little windy, so we'll see how this video turns out. But anyway, these are what the first year graphs look like. I just had my first couple freezes, so um, there's a little bit of frost damage on these leaves. It's only gonna get worse because we're in our first few days of winter. But you can't really tell from this video, but this is probably about three inches wide. So this is a first year, believe it or not. I grafted that this first year, and in one year, it's already three inches wide. This one's not quite as impressive, but it's over two inches wide, which is still pretty impressive to me. And I had to cut them back multiple times because they're reaching for the sky. So I was docking them down about three feet up just to get them to bush out because they just kept on, like I said, just looking like uh, water sprouts, just trying to get as much sunlight as possible, mainly because this was a 30 foot tall tree that I chopped down to like, what, four feet tall? So it's it probably has a massive root system it's trying to support and was trying to put down as many branches and um, capture as much light as possible. So pretty impressive. All right, similar story over on this side of my yard. So I have six Bradfords in a row. And if you've never had Bradford pears, you might not realize how impressive this is to be able to turn such a giant worthless tree into something so awesome. But yeah, these, these grafts did amazingly well. I mean, they took off so aggressively that I actually had to prune them probably like six times. Once a month, I had to half their size because I let some of them go and they got so big. I mean, they literally got taller than this trunk and then just sheared off in the wind. So there's so much vigor from this incredible rootstock that pushes these grafts so that they just grow ridiculously fast. Like they don't know how to regulate themselves to keep themselves from just snapping in the wind. So you kind of have to watch them. And from my experience, you don't want to let them get it more than about three feet long. And once they get about three feet long, you just strategically prune them. And then, you know, they'll start growing again. And then you just add another bud. If you've ever done any attempts at bonsai or um, heavy pruning, you know what I'm talking about. And just keep them down. You can kind of see, I was trying to get them to keep this kind of a pseudo round shape and then just keep pruning. But as you can see, these, these got almost two, two inches wide. Some of these like an inch and a half, inch and a half or so. A little wider. This one's pretty beefy. This one actually had one shear off in the wind. But I had virtually every single graft take, which really surprised me. I didn't realize, oops, squirrels have been up here. <laughs> I was really surprised. I was thinking that bark grafts wouldn't be so successful because someone was telling me they're like 50% or something like that. And I think I had every single one of mine take except for one where I didn't take off as much on top. And I think what happened on this one on the end over here, this one on the end right here, I had two fail, but I left a whole bunch of growth above them. And I think what the tree did is it just decided to not send nutrients to those grafts. And so they didn't take. So lesson learned, make sure your grafts are the highest point on the tree if you do bark grafting at least. Otherwise the tree will be like, why am I wasting my time with this graft? Let's just, you know, feed these branches that have a perfectly connected uh, vascular system. But anyway, these ones grew decently, not quite as vigorously as some of the other ones. I saw a really bizarre growth habit too. So see here, I have these branches that just kind of do this weird, like curly fry type thing. And I'm not sure if that's just the variety because I did get cuttings from a friend. I believe I had three or four three or four different types of pear cuttings that I grafted into here randomly. And I lost track of which ones were which. I'm sure next year if they fruit, I'll figure it out real quick. But I had some Asian pears and some um, Bartlets and Anjou, Anjou, however you say it. I just all kind of just randomly mixed in. I had three different, three or four different bags and I just, I tried to mix it up. So on most of the trees, it should be one of one and one of the other but they all came out pretty big. They all grew pretty vigorously. The main trick is to just come over once a month and if there's any like, if there's any native suckers, you just wanna kinda of knock them off. So the tree has no choice but to use the grafted wood 
for nutrients for photosynthesis. Otherwise, the tree will prefer to use the wild, the wild type rootstock. You just can't let the wild type overtake the tree. And this one actually lost one in the wind as well. You can see the, the residual part that is left behind. So this one only has one graft. So I actually let this one have a couple suckers just to get enough sunlight. Next year, what I'll probably do, probably end up having to take a couple inches off of this. I'll just keep cutting until I can find viable um, vascular tissue or viable um, cambium. And then I'll just graft in probably a, actually a piece of this since that one did so well with this particular rootstock. Just graft in a branch over here just to even out the tree. And it's so easy to do once you have your own source of, of preferred wood. Because I had to get a lot of cuttings from a friend and I'll probably cut this stuff back to about a foot and then let that kind of take off. And then this extra wood I'll probably remove next year. But I'm not gonna mess with it until probably a month before bud break. So probably in like April, March or April, depending. So anyway, I hope that inspires you to graft your wild type pears and apples. It's such an easy thing to do. I didn't really realize how easy it was, but yeah, if you're curious how to do that, just check out my grafting videos that I posted uh, back in the spring, and I'll link those in the description as well. Thanks for joining me in the chaos.